I didn't want to turn this channel too much into church politics because it gets very divisive, divisive when you talk about this. And I do want to encourage people to know the faith, to know Christ, to know what I love, to, to renew the Eucharist. But I was thinking about what was happening in France with Cardinal uh, Jean-Pierre Richard, who in effect has been accused of raping a 14-year-old girl. He's admitted it. I mean, I, to what extent, we don't know, but we know he, he forced himself on this girl. And as a father of two daughters, one who is 16 years old, you know, I'd be horrified if any man did that to my 14-year-old daughters. And I think most normal fathers would be horrified if anybody touched their children. I can certainly tell you um, I would be uh, holding back no punches if somebody came and, uh, and told me that they had done something like that to my children. Uh, I think the emotions for any normal man are very strong when it comes to this. And the, and the Vatican and the Pope have been very quiet about the fact that a cardinal has admitted to this abuse of a 14-year-old girl. Um, you would think there would be some swift reaction from the Vatican that Cardinal uh, Jean-Pierre Richard has uh, had his red hat removed and has been a ro removed from the uh, Electoral College of Cardinals in Rome. He's still 78. He could go to the Conclave tomorrow if there was one. And yet we seem a Rome very, very slow to react to this to come down and say that this man has been removed for, from the Electoral College, like um, uh, Cardinal McCarrick, who was also ac accused of abusing a minor, like uh, Cardinal Jean-Pierre. Uh, Jean so why, why, why is Rome so, so reluctant to step in here and to take action quickly after he's actually confirmed these allegations. It's not like these are any allegations. He's actually confirmed this happened. You know, if it's, 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 it really does annoy me as a parent to see the uh, Rome move so slowly. I mean, we, anytime you want to renew the faith, you always get the abuse scandals thrown back at you. What, you're preaching about Christ and God and all this? But the Catholic Church did this and the Catholic Church did that and the Catholic Church covered up. I mean... The Catholic Church is very big. It doesn't, uh, my experience of Christ, my love for Christ shouldn't be tarnished by what other people didn't do. It's quite interesting when we talk about this particular cardinal, that this cardinal did everything in his power to destroy the faith while he was a bishop. He closed the seminary in Bordeaux. He closed the seminary in Bordeaux. I mean, imagine being the Archbishop of Bordeaux and what do you do? You go in there, you close the seminary. These men don't have faith. These men don't have faith. They don't have the Holy Spirit with them. They are destroyers of the faith. They are destroyers of the faith. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They are just literally the destroyers of the faith. And Rome should, should, should wake up instead of the Pope travelling to Bahrain and then defending the appointment of um, a woman who is an atheist pro-abortion to add some humanity to the pontifical institute, to the pontifical institute of life. Oh, we need to add some humanity because there are no women, there are no Catholic women that can add humanity to in Rome anymore. You know, normal formed Catholic women are not intelligent enough. P women who have the faith are not intelligent enough to add humanity to the Pontifical Academy of Life. They have to go and find a pro-abortion atheist. You know, a pro-abortion. This is Rome for, me, for you. And these are the facts. The Pope confirmed it. The Pope said he, he approved it to add humanity. Now, uh, let's hope that the Pope has some ulterior motive. Maybe he's trying to evangelise. But maybe the Pope could add some humanity now and remove Cardinal Jean-Pierre from the College of Electoral Cardinals. Maybe he could act a little bit quicker next time when a Cardinal actually comes out and confirms that he abused a 14-year-old girl. You know, it, it, just, it just beggars belief really what is going on in the church today. How hierarchy strangle the ability to preach the gospel. They strangle it. 
They are so strangle it. This synodal process is strangling the church. Because you're not able to preach what the faith actually is. You don't you won't actually say tell us what is the deposit of the faith that you actually believe in. Because it's quite clear that this cardinal does if he wa- if he actually did believe, if that cardinal actually did believe, he would not have accepted to have be the appointment of a bishop. He would not have accepted the appointment of a cardinal. He would not have accepted that. He would have remained a priest and made penance and lived a life of of penance away from the spotlight. And yet he thought he thought he could rise up in the church, knowing about the abuse that he caused. Knowing about the abuse that he caused. I mean it's 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 really shocking. It's really shocking to think that Rome now is moving so slow when it comes to acting, making a decision on Jean-Pierre. Because they are very quick at defending, appointing women who are pro-abortion and atheists to add humanity to their institutions in Rome. Let's add, because there's no way, it's, it's amazing, you know, there, it's amazing there are no Catholic women who are economists anymore. You know, it's amazing how stupid Catholic women are treated. Catholic women who have faith there is no there seems to be none of them out there I don't know what education we're given today us Catholics don't seem to be educating women at all that we can't find a woman who is an economist to add humanity I mean where shall I start where shall I start I'm just you know I didn't know if I was going to do this video but then I was just thinking you know I'm a father I'm a father I have children I have daughters you know and I would want people to move to avoid the horror of this we need to form men to respect women to respect themselves and to respect women to respect others we need to form our boys we need to teach the faith you need to call out to men it's wrong to look at pornography it's wrong to use women and if people actually taught the faith there would be less of this Call it out. Men have to call out other men who are not living the faith. And it's this church that doesn't want to preach the faith. Oh, we've seen it with Father Sheehy. You know, we've seen it. Oh, this is not the Christian way. This is not the, the bishop. Doesn't Does the bishop actually know what the Christian faith is? We need to call out what is sin. You need to call it out. Men start looking at pornography and they move on to where else? They use and abuse women. Why is it that one in four women, apparently in Ireland, are... are abused or mistreated by other men. Why is it? Apparently, these are statistics, that one in four women in, in Ireland are uh, abused or misused or maltreated by other men. Why is that statistic there? Because I know uh, many women have reached out to me suffering. You know, you have to call it out. You have to form people. You have to form your kids. You have to tell them what's right and what's wrong. And we don't seem to be able to do this. And this is why this bishop, all he did was destroy the faith in his archdiocese. He was the destroyer of the faith. Literally, the destroyer of the faith. And we have Rome now that is not able to come down and tell us and act and remove that bit cardinal from the College of Cardinals. It shouldn't take them so long. There should be a zero policy. They should act. But like, you yeah, know, and this is why, oh, the abuse will always be thrown at us. I mean, there will always be sin and abuse in the church. There will always be, because as long as there are human beings in this world, there will be problems in any institution which has human beings. We know this. But there doesn't have to be the cover up, the slowness to act for a moment. You, you can act. You have to act. Um... And, you know, that's that's literally what I say. And, 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 and in traditional movement, I'm just going to say this because Church Militant today has come out about another story of another SSPX priest. I love many laity who go to the SSPX. I, they're, they're good friends. But let's not be naive with ourselves. You cannot cover up abuse of any kind in any location. You have to be open about this. You have to deal with it. You have to. And it's and it hurts. It hurts people, you know. It hurts, but does oh, how do you heal? How do we heal as a church if we do not deal openly with the problems that we have? Deal with them, move on. I mean, 
it's 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 very 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 sad to see what happened in the archdiocese of bordeaux over 18 years with that bishop who let the faith be destroyed who closed seminaries i mean it's ironic you know bishop ray that traditional bishop who wants to ordain um you know, more, more traditional. And Rome was very quick to come in and shut him down because he was being too traditional. And yet we have a liberal archbishop there, a liberal cardinal who elected Pope Francis, a liberal cardinal there in, in Bordeaux who closed seminaries, who wasn't able to, to leave any legacy because he had no faith. He had no faith. The Holy Spirit abandoned him. He thought he could do this, he could do that. You know, if you if you drag these problems without making amends, and he obviously didn't, he destroyed that woman's life, apparently. You know, these these things have to be dealt with, they ha- and, and Rome has to deal with them, and I don't care. You know, it's it's very sad for laity, for us laity. They're trying to f- preach the faith and talk about the faith, and you always get these problems thrown back at you. Yes, there will be abuse, but how do you deal with it? How do you deal with it? How is the Pope going to deal with this? You know, this is, it's incredibly sad, the lack of leadership we have in the church. And it's, and it's here in Ireland. It's here in Ireland. I mean, I called out the fact of that seminary and the committed suicide in Turles. And I got so much abuse. So much abuse. And there are people in Ireland. There are clergy. There are bishops. There's a bishop alive in Ireland. There are priests in Ireland who know what happened there. You know what happened there. And instead of trying to destroy my life because I called it out, I got the coroner's report from Thurlis. I know how that young man died. I know what they did to him in the seminary. You won't come out and make amends. And the Irish church has been covering things up for years and years and years. And you will come back to me. They will come after me for calling out this. You have to deal with it. You have to deal with abuse. You have to open you have to make amends to those people to the families you have to literally go and make amends and say sorry you have to you will go before god you i mean you will go i i can tell you and i know this you will not go before god you will not go before christ if you do not make amends and deal with these things in the church i mean there's uh, there's no point in dragging it you have to you have to walk back and take up your cross and and accept it and make amends. You know, don't come back to me because I highlight abuse. You know, these stories came to me. People came to me and asked me to talk about, especially what happened to that seminarian who hung himself in Thurla Seminary. And you were very quick. They were very quick. Rome was very quick to go in and do an analysis and to close the seminary. And look at what's happening in Minuth. Look what you did in Minuth. And I'm sorry to say it, but so much of it is covered up. And when I try to talk about it, the cold calls, you come after me, you come after my work, you come after my wife, you come after my kids. I don't care. I don't care. You can come after who you like. You know, you cannot cover, continue to do the, cover this up. You have to deal with it. Otherwise, you will strangle the faith and the Holy Spirit will not work with you. The Holy Spirit will flee from you. He cannot work in a house divided and a soul divided. He will not. Your ministry will be empty if you do not make amends for what has happened. You know, as difficult as it is. You know, this is very, very sad, you know, what what this cardinal did. But, uh, you know, it's it's desperately, it's desperately sad. Um, And it's sad in Ireland. You know, to renew the faith, there needs to be honesty. There needs to be reparation. There needs to be, you need to go back. You need to, ask, to say sorry for what you've did, for the people you've offended, for the hurt you've caused. And I know it. I know who people, I'm not going to talk about this. I know the problems in Ireland. What's the way forward? How are, how are we going to heal as a church in Ireland? You know, I mean, we, are we going to just continue on the same path? Nobody was going to disrespect somebody if they just take up the cross, say sorry, make amends. You know, there's there's no other option. More, maybe you'd be more respected. What's the legacy of Cardinal Richard, Jean-Pierre Richard in, 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 in France? The legacy of is, is he closed the seminary because there were only five seminaries le- left. Imagine 
Imagine the Archdiocese of Bordeaux left with five seminarians in, in 2019. And he was very quick to give his resignation was, and Rome was very quick to accept it. And now we know the allegations and the Pope has refused to move. Anyway, pray for the church. You know, I, I desperately love the church, but we need to, to change. We need to reform. We need to return to Christ. We need to be authentic. There's no other way around it. There's no other way around it. God bless. Take care. Bye bye.